Hey guys, um, tonight's video, uh, it's 4th of July weekend and uh, cables, fuck me. <laughs> I never thought I'd do this fucking video, man. <laughs> uh, with lots of gratitude, uh, Straight Wire Cables is sponsoring all interconnects and speaker cables at this year's Arizona Audio Video Club's uh, uh, 2022 Speaker Fest. And... And they will also be on, the, the owner designer, uh, Jerry, will be on hand um, to answer people's questions and things like that. So he did me a solid personally by not only giving the Orchard Audio Room enough uh, one meter and two meter pair XLR interconnects, but an, another pair of uh, 10 foot uh, Octave 3 uh, speaker cables. I'll make sure there's links to both the uh, website um, I'll call it the website propaganda, but it's actually real. Um, Steven, who's the another designer at uh, Straight Wire Cable, I had conversations with him last week and the week before. And if you guys thought I drew, dropped a lot of F-bombs, I ain't nothing compared to Steven, but Steven knows his shit inside and out. Yes, he's intense. Um, yes, he doesn't tolerate stupid people. And I, I, I think that's awesome, you know. It's very rare in, so far from what I've dealt with, in the quote-unquote high end of things where you run into people that have a solid, you know, no bullshit attitude, you know. I, yes, we sell cables. Yes, we sell expensive ones. We sell expensive ones. We sell cheap ones. We sell intermediate ones or middle-of-the-road ones. I'm the middle-of-the-road guy. So... I actually put my money where my mouth is. Um, um, again, Jerry, the owner, sent me today uh, two pairs of one meter and two pairs of two meter Symphony 3 XLR cables and a 10 foot pair of Octave 3 uh, cables, which I've got another set, but this one actually belongs to the uh, organizer, the, the, the club's uh, hijinks part of things. The, there's another pair that I'm buying that was shipped to me today. I'll burn those in uh, accordingly. Anyhow, so I ordered those links for two reasons. A, for the show, and B, because I'm buying them outright for my own personal system. And you guys have seen the pictures of my, my in-wall cabinets and all that stuff. And the problem is I've got a lot of AudioQuest cables and I've literally link the XLRs together with whatever and it works. I don't say it doesn't work <clears throat> but what I noticed today was I'd had the Octave 3 speaker cables now for about three weeks uh, since Jeff uh, lent them to me and now I'm buying my own pair and did I make a huge difference between the Rocket 33 Audio Quest cable and the St Straight Wire Symphony 3 cable? To me, not really, but what I appreciated and why I'm putting my money where my mouth is is the build quality, right? The one issue I had with the AudioQuest stuff is over time and lots of pulling out and changing um, the banana plugs, not so much the oxidation uh, on the ends, but the actual physical, I can now see the bare copper wire, you know, after about four years. And, and this happened a few years ago, actually. You know, I bought the cables as open box at Best Buy Magnolia here in Scottsdale, Arizona. And they work. I don't say they don't work, but the build quality is crap, you know. And so anyhow, you know, I dealt with it and it didn't really affect the sound quality, you know. And same thing, when I swapped it out with the Symphony 3 cables, I didn't really notice a difference. Nothing that really jumped out at me. Because, like I said in my previous video, I'm not a cable guy, but I do appreciate a solidly built cable, regardless of what technology is inside the, you know, the, the jacket, right? But then today, I basically got rid of all my cobbled together audio quest cables, stuff that I'd terminated from bulk cables I'd bought or stuff that I'd adapted from RCA to XLR. And I basically ground both ends of the cable. I don't leave either end uh, open, right? Uh, 
unless it's RCA to XLR, then yes, I disable the uh, the negative pin on the XLR side, right? Um, and that was recommended to me by, by BAT, so I don't burn the preamp input out or the preamp output out. You know what I mean? Anyhow, two tangents, not bad. Um, so, but today, um, Nancy and I were watching. Ah, damn it, I forget the name. It's it's got Chris Pratt and it. it's a brand new uh, um, mini series on um, Amazon. There. Anyhow, I've been immediately noticed a deeper extension in the base. Um, not so, when I say mid-range prominence, not to the point where you know the horns are shouting at me, right? But I, I just noticed a little more. I'm not going to say meat on the fucking bones because that's a stupid fucking uh, uh, terminology. Fuck. It's a fucking steak or a fucking lamb, you know? It's meat. What the fuck is meat on the fucking bones, right? Anyhow, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I noticed the mid range had a little more prominence to it, but not in a bad way. Treble stayed the same. It wasn't rolled off or it wasn't peaky or anything like that. And understand that I'm not a guy that fully believes that cables make a fucking difference. Somehow they did today. It wasn't the speaker cables, it was the interconnects. Okay, and it, it, it's just, I know guys, and I, I'm ready for the fucking flame comments. It, it's, it's okay, I deserve it, right? But I wouldn't spend all this money on these fucking cables if I didn't think they were going to mean anything. And the main, main thing is, it's the build quality, right? It's how, you know, I've said it before, you know, audio cables, be it speaker or line level interconnect or digital, you know, or HDMI or, you know, or USB or whatever, it gets to a point where you're going from build quality, you're buying for build quality, and then you're buying for the audio jewelry aspect. And all these guys that can claim they can hear the fart of an at when they spend so many thousand dollars on a piece of fucking cable, and don't even get me started on the AC power cords, right? Um, no, right? I'm not. I'm not one of those guys, right? But the, you know, both Jerry and Stephen. I'm going to have links to the website, links to the cables that I'm buying, and links to the white papers that Stephen put out. It's what I'm saying to you guys on the video. I've said to mainly Stephen personally on the phone, not in a demeaning way or a derogatory way, but he got it, right? He got it, and he's like, yeah, you're the guy that's not going to buy our top-of-the-line shit. The funny thing is, I've had exposure to straight wire cables a couple of years ago. Uh, when we went to the Tucson uh, DIY Fest, and I had my whole bow set up, uh, Jason Trickstra, or Tripstra, sorry, who, and his wife who were organizing it, well, Jason builds cables, right? And... You know, he has his own patent determinations, and he does USB, he does digital, he does analog interconnects, uh, speaker cables, and all that stuff. And what he'd done was he'd bought bulk reels from Straightwire and did his own patent determinations, right? And they work great. You know, I've, I've used his digital interconnect both on my old... Uh, PS Audio Sony rig. I've unplugged and plugged that thing a thousand times. Never had an issue. Never had a breakdown. Um, so I'm going to probably bring. I'll be bringing that to the show, and I'll also be bringing everything that I've got hooked up in the back of my system here. And yeah, guys, it's like, it's. Do cables make a difference? Yes and no. It, it just. How much are you willing to spend to find out? And can you work with a manufacturer that'll give you a 30-day money back, right? Uh, don't quote me on that when it comes to straight wire. I will get, send you guys the links, and you guys can read up on their warranty policies on the, on the link. Um, again, I missed my homework there. My apologies to both straight wire and to the viewers, but whatever. Basically, yeah, the, the, the only other news is uh, ELAC has been kind enough to lend us 
in the Orchard Audio Room, a pair of Tower Elac Debut 2.0 references. It's the ones with the, the slot on the bottom. I think they were Andrew Jones' one of his last designs before he left for uh, MoFi and all that. And they've also uh, lent us a pair of bookshelf speakers for the Orchard Audio Room, which we're going to be raffling off at the 2022 uh, um, Arizona Audio Video Club's um, Speaker Fest. So, yeah, there's a lot of cool things going on right now. And, uh, you know, basically, guys, thanks again for supporting the channel. Anybody who's local to the Phoenix area, I mean, hell, we, like I said in the last video, people came out from California to the Speaker Fest uh, three years ago at the 2019 one. So, yeah, if you're around, we're going to be at the Fountain Hills uh, Rec Center. And it'll be on Saturday, August the 27th. And I believe the time is going to be 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. But if you get there a little earlier, we'll let you in. It's not, not a big deal. All right, guys, have a good uh, 4th of July weekend. We'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks and all the best. Bye for now.